Hi guys, this is Kushbu and welcome to Algorithms Made Easy. In this video, we'll see the question n queens. The n queen puzzle is a problem of placing n number of queens on an n cross n chessboard such that no two queens attack each other. Given an integer n, return all the distinct solutions to the n queen puzzle. Each solution contains a distinct board configuration of the n queen's placement where Q represent queen and dot will represent an empty space. So we are given this example which says n equal to 4. So here we have got a 4 cross 4 chessboard and we can have two combinations of queen's placement wherein we have placed 4 queens on the chessboard such that no queens are attacking the other queens. How do you know if a queen can attack another queen or not? In chess, a queen may attack another queen if it is coming into the same row, if it is coming into the same column or if it appears in one of the diagonals for that particular queen. So these are the three conditions that we need to take care of. Similarly, we are given the second example and the constraint says that n would be in between 1 and 9. One of the basic intuitions for this question is that you need to iterate over each and every cell in the chessboard and try to find a combination so it becomes a DFS solution and secondly if you are unable to do so you need to backtrack it and try for another combination. So this question is going to be a combination of DFS and backtracking. So let's go ahead and see how we can use it to solve this problem. Let's take the same example of 4 cross 4 chessboard. So these are the two placements that are possible for n queen problem. Now let's take one of the chessboard and see what are the directions a queen can move. So over here we have given the path a queen can take in different colors for all the different queens. So if you see this queen which is having a path of blue dotted line will move in either this diagonal or this column or this row. Similarly for all the other queens. Now if you notice for this particular cell there are no other color dotted lines coming in. This means that no other queen can reach this particular cell. Similarly for the green one, white one and the red one. And so these are the safe placements for the queens. So the first thing that comes to the mind is what are the conditions that we can apply to choose a safe position. Now a queen cannot be placed in the same row, same column and same diagonal. If we take this particular queen, no queen should come in the same row as it is falling into the same column it is falling into or in any of the diagonal cells for this queen. And if you see over here, all the conditions are satisfied. And so this is a safe position for this particular queen. Now, how do we find out if the other queens are in same row, same column or same diagonal? So for that, let's start with the same row condition. If any of the other queen falls in the same row, the absolute difference between the rows of both the queens would be zero. That is, the row for this particular queen, if placed here, would have been row 1 and this is also in row 1. So the difference between those two rows is 0 and that should not be the case. Similarly for column, the absolute difference of the columns of two queens must not be 0. That is, it should be non-zero. So if this queen was falling into this column, the column for this particular queen would have been 3 and for this queen is also 3. Its absolute difference would have become 0 and so we can say that the queens are in the same line and one of the queen can attack the other queen. So we need to take care of this condition. So we are taking dy not equal to 0 as a condition for same column. Third is the diagonal condition. Now how do you find out the diagonal element? If you notice for a diagonal element we are going to move the same amount in x and the same amount in y and that becomes the diagonal. So the difference between the x is equal to the difference between the y for a diagonal. So we are going to say that the absolute difference between the rows of the queens must not be equal to the absolute difference of the columns for the queen. That is 
dx should not be equal to dy and so these are the three conditions that we need to apply that is my dx should not be equal to 0, dy should not be equal to 0 and dx must not be equal to dy. Now let's see what are the different data structures that we would need in order to solve this problem. The first one that we are going to need is the board, the n cross n board representation. So it would be a character array that would be n cross n and dot will represent empty and q will represent queen in that. The second thing is to store the position of all the queens that we have placed till now. So for that we will need a list of all the positions and a position will be given by x and y coordinate so that we can take it as an integer array. So these were the things that we would need. Next is what are the steps and how we are going to solve this problem. So the first thing is to perform DFS and for that we will start from 0, 0 that is the first cell. The second step is check if a queen can be placed at the current position. So for that we will be checking if it is a valid position or not. If it is, we will place the queen, we will fix that position and we will try adding the remaining queens in the board. If not, we will backtrack and check for other combinations. So like this we need to find all the combinations. Now one more thing that we need to note over here is that while repeating the process or while recursively calling the DFS function, suppose we have placed a queen over here in row 0. Now, while repeating, would I need to start with the next cell in the same row? No. I need to go into the row below because we know that we cannot add the queen in the same row. So we skip the current row and call the DFS function on the next row. So we'll be going row by row and we'll try to solve this problem. So this was about the process that is going to be involved. Now let's go ahead and code this out. The first thing that we are going to need over here is the result which is in the form of list of list of string. And let's initialize it. The second thing is the board which is going to be a 2D character array and its size is going to be n cross n. Initially we'll fill this board as an empty board. So we are going to add all the dots in it. So over here we have filled it as empty cells. Now the other thing that we need is the positions for all the queens that we have. So it would be a list and initially it would be an empty list. After we have this we are going to call DFS on the board starting from the 0th row and we will pass this queens list. So this is going to take care of all the logic. Finally, we can return the result and this is going to be our main functionality. Now let's write the DFS function. So this is our DFS function. In this, we need to see that if all the queens are placed or not. So that would become the exit condition. So if all the queens are placed, its size will be equal to n that is board dot length. If that is the case we need to construct our output. For constructing the output which is in the format of list of list of string. Now the internal string represents the rows so let's take that and we'll iterate over the board for each row. With this we need to add this character array as a string into the rows. Once this is done we need to add this particular rows into our result. So we'll do result.add rows and that's all our result has been constructed. If this is not the case then we need to try adding the queen. So we'll take a loop and try adding the queen. So this is going to be iterated for a row and over here we'll take iteration on the column. Let's check if we can add a queen for this particular row and column given the queens that I have already added. So if we can add a queen, we are going to update the board with Q for this particular position. With this, we also need to update the queens list. So queens.add r, c and now we need to call DFS on the next row with the updated queens list. 
after this is done we also need to backtrack and check for other positions because we need all the combinations so for backtracking we again need to set this as dot instead of q and we need to remove the queen that we added so this is going to take care of recursively calling the function and finding the combinations now what we need is implement the can add queen method so let's write that So over here we need to check the condition for row column and diagonal. So for all the queens that we have placed we need to check and see whether the current row column is safe or not. So let's iterate over this. And over here we need to check dx dy conditions. So let's calculate dx which will be the difference between the rows and dy would be difference between the column. So now we need to return false if it falls in the same row, same column or same diagonal which would be given by the condition if dx is 0 or dy is 0 or dx is equal to dy. If this is there return false and if for any queen this is not satisfied return true. And that's it let's try to run this code and see if we have any compile time issues. And this is a character array. Let's run this again. And it's giving a perfect result. Let's submit this. And it got submitted. So that's it for this question guys. I hope you liked it. And I'll see you in another one. So till then keep learning, keep coding. Bye bye.